Okay, so welcome everyone to this final lecture um, on the diagrammatic theory of Zergo bimodules. And we will finally see Zergo's categorification theorem, which is kind of the main statement. Uh, of course, you wouldn't be surprised that it's just saying that, well, the Zergo bimodules categorify the Hecker algebra, but we will see it now in details, whatever is, whatever is missing. So whenever you're ready, you're, you're ready to go. I just have a problem with uh, there's a, like notification appearing on my screen and I don't know how to remove it. <laughs> so uh, just one oh. second. Okay. Um, okay. Let's try again. Okay. So should I start? Yes, whenever you're ready. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the final part of the diagrammatic theory, which is the fifth part. And I'm going to state uh, a new version of the Sorgen categorification theorem. So uh, just to uh, recall what we have been doing for the past few uh, talks, we have essentially constructed a new category, HBS, uh, which was diagram completely diagrammatic and we had constructed a functor from this category from this diagrammatic category to the both samuelson category of bimodules and uh, um, today uh, the first part of my talk i'm going to construct an explicit basis we are going to construct an explicit basis for the home spaces of the of this diagrammatic category, uh, which is a linear category. And we are going to use this basis essentially to study its, the image of the entire category under the functor F, which will turn out to be a full and faithful subcategory of both Samuelson bimodules. And uh, the, the, the uh, the, the basis will itself would play a role in, in showing this, uh, that the functor is full and faithful. And um, this is the first part, is going to be my, the topic of my first part. The second part, we have seen that in some sense, uh, the Caribbean envelope of the both Samuelson bimodules is the Sorgen bimodules. And we're going to, uh, the, 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 the authors of the book, uh, have tried to look at something like the the, the, Karubia, the Karubian envelope of the, this uh, diagrammatic category, and will do the same and hope for the best. And essentially, we're going to get a very nice uh, categorification theorem. So, uh, it's, and it would be completely analogous to the Zorgel categorification theorem that has been mentioned last time. Okay, but in order to start to start talking about the basis and all that, we have to recall a few uh, definitions from the earlier parts of the seminar. And um, the, the most important and the, perhaps the only one that I, we're going to need is the notion of the Bruhat order. So given a Coxeter system um, uh, with Coxeter group W and the generators S, and suppose we have two elements x and y such that the length of x is less than the length of y and that there exists an element t such that x t equals y. Then we, uh, we, we, we say that x is less than y. And um, this, this uh, relation gives a, like a, can be extended transitively. Uh, by following yeah, this rela this partial relation gives um, like uh, gives the w a structure a directed tree like structure so there's a picture here which is not accurate in any sense but it just shows that it's um, it's like a directed tree so and we can follow the relations across the direction of the arrows in order to compare two elements if one lies on top of the other in some sense this is the bruhat order which is really crucial we uh, also need the, the notion of, a, the, there was a particular way we could have attached decorations to sub-expressions of words in the group. And um, the decorations were elements of this, four element set of uh, 
U0, U1, B0, D1, and the choice of which one was given by the following recipe. So suppose we're given, given a sub-expression E of W, which was represented as a sequence of ones and zeros of the, of the same length as the word. Um, um, and we decorate E uh, according to the following rule. So uh, at each step, at each E sub I, we attach to it um, either a U or a D according to uh, the following recipe. So if the product of the elements of S1 up to SI is greater than the product of the elements from S1 up to, I, up to SI minus 1, then we uh, put a u and the subscript is uh, either um, one or a zero depending on e sub i itself whether it was a one or a zero and uh, otherwise we put a d and with the same rule for the subscript it's a one or a zero depending whether e is a one or a, e sub i is a one or a zero and there was a notion of a de the defect, which was defined to be the difference of the numbers of u's, uh, u u zeros, and and the uh, and the number of d zeros. So um, a stupid example would be uh, we have a sequence of three s's, so s s s, and the sub expression represented by one zero zero, and another one represented by one zero one. Then the decorations would be uh, u1, d0, d0, and u1, d0, d1, respectively. Now we, 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 we can define what we mean by a Rex move. And uh, okay, so the definition, it's, uh, this also, um, this notion would be crucial in the definition of light leaves, which are the parts of the basis of that we want to, to define and uh, a rex move is something that happens on a co corresponding to a path in a rex graph and so i'm going to i'm going to define what the rex graph first is so suppose we're given an element in the group an element w uh, the rex graph corresponding to w would be the graph whose vertices are the distinct reduced expressions of w so for every possible reduced expression we we assign we put vertices in the plane and we attach we relate the vertices by an edge if uh, one uh, if the corresponding um, reduced expression can be gotten from one another by a braid relation so um, a direct application of matsumoto's theorem is that all uh, Rex graphs are essentially connected. So we can move from any vertex to any other vertex. It's just uh, an equivalent restatement of Matsumoto's theorem. So we can move from any vertex to any other vertex by a sequence of braid relations. So the graph is connected. Now, um, a, a Rex move, uh, now, okay. Suppose we have two vertices and the Rex graph corresponding to W. And we have a path going from one vertex to another. Then we can uh, we we get uh, we, this essentially represents a sequence of braid relations starting from one uh, reduced expression to another, and we can uh, assign to it uh, the composition of the corresponding morphisms in the diagrammatic category. So uh, this this would be the Rex move corresponding to the path. Uh, in, in, in inside the Rex graph, uh, the path in the Rex graph, yeah, on the Rex graph. So in other words, we, we assign to a path between the vertices in the Rex graph, we assign to it a sequence of the uh, diagrammatic uh, two MST valent morphisms in the diagrammatic category corresponding to the braid relations appearing in the given path by the same order. So this is a very big, simplest uh, example of a cycle and that can occur on a Rex graph. So uh, we have an element in this Coxter group, we have an element W, which is SU, TSU. And we can go from the top, uh, 
top uh, object in this diagram to the bottom one by like by two different ways. So we can you, uh, deploy the braid relation on the right first and then on the left. Or we can deploy the braid relation between S and U on the left first, uh, on the right first, and then on the left. And the, 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 a cycle of this type is is, is called uh, this joint cycles, essentially because we apply braid relations to uh, to this joint elements in the in the, in, in the same world. So uh, it's called the this joint cycle. Now uh, we do a quick detour. De so um, suppose we're, we, we're given an element W inside the rank three finite Coxeter group. Um, we, we, the, it has been, it's an exercise, uh, and many, it's like two exercises would establish the fact that there's always a cycle in the Rex graph of the longest element. So uh, this uh, cycle of this type would be called the Zamolodorchikov cycle. And uh, for reasons that I personally have not yet understood fully, it, um, it, it can be argued that uh, we, know we don't need four color relations, five color relations or anything because uh, complexity is uh, arising between uh, Like arising in the Rex graphs of, a, of an object, of, a, of, a, of an element, uh, can all, it's a theorem that any cycle can always be decomposed into disjoint cycles and Zamolodorchikov cycles. So uh, it, I think there's an argument in the book that, which is not really fully spelled out, but I think it, what it tries to say is that one can use this fact to actually argue that one cannot, do not, does not need higher color to define higher color relations in order to get the diagrammatic, uh, the properly working diagrammatic category. So this was a quick detour. We we'll go back to the heart of the topic. Now the Lebedinsky's light leaves, which are the elements that uh, we're going to use to construct the bases. Uh, so um, we start with an expression and the W and the sub expression E and suppose that uh, it evaluates to an element X in the Coxeter group. Uh, we will construct a morphism, which is denoted by LLWE, uh, which is the light leaf from, from W essentially to X, but we need to know how exactly we went to X, so we use the subscript E. Um, and it's a morphism in the diagrammatic category, and um, uh, we choose, um, uh, it would be for, uh, to, uh, the target would be a particular reduced expression of X. Um, and the, it will be constructed in such a way, uh, such that the degree of LLWE uh, would be the, the defect of this uh, sub-expression. Okay, now before we define it more, go inside the definition itself, one uh, philosophical uh, consequence is that we can um, take the dual of LLWE by flipping the diagram and get essentially a, a morphism from the re reduced expression for X that we started with to W. So it's in the other direction. And we can use it to suppose now we have two uh, we have two uh, words, W and Y, and corresponding to sub-expression E and F, such that they both evaluate to X. So uh, we can now compose LLYF, the dual of it. Uh, we can compose it with LLWE, since they both factor through X. And uh, with this composition, we will uh, uh, denote it by um, bolded uh, LLFEX to denote the particular um, sub expressions that we are talking about and the, the element that they factor through, which is X in the superscript. And it takes, by definition, takes uh, the word W to, uh, to Y. And uh, the diagram is, 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 uh, is, is drawn like that. It's a trapezoid. It's a two, it's a Two, uh, it's a trapezoid and on top of it an 
another an inverted trapezoid, and the choice of a trapezoid to 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 denote uh, to represent one light leaf is because the if you think about it the the light leaf the a light leaf always takes um, uh, a, a word to another with uh, length less than or equal to the starting one so it's a trapezoid and then okay we factor through a smaller one and then we might go back up in the Bruhat order so that's why it has this hourglass shape okay so now we need to give an actual definition so we didn't yet say it so before I start saying the actual definition, there's an important remark actually, but it's not that it, it has, it is shown later in the book that it's not that important, but it is important still for us to, to make sense. Is that, okay, the, 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 the light leaves will be defined sequentially, inductively, it's an inductive construction. And at each step, we, uh, it's a sequence, okay, we get a sequence of morphisms and at each step, uh, each morphism will have a, a, a source and a target and we need to choose at each step a particular reduced expression for the source and for the target so which might not actually uh, yeah, at each step they, they might differ so we the, the, the for example if x i uh, if x is uh, appears in the ith step and it reappeared at the i plus one step, um, then uh, we could have chosen the different reduced expressions for the both of them. So this is why we have the we need to define the notion of a Rex move in order to uh, go from one reduced expression to another, but more on that uh, shortly. Now, okay, we start, and the first step is to, to define a morphism between the two empty words which we just say it, it is the identity. So we define it to be the identity in R. Um, um, now, suppose we have constructed the first, the, the, the K minus one um, element, uh, K minus one morphism, and we want to define LK, LLK. So uh, L, suppose we know how LLK minus one uh, maps the first, the word composed of the first k minus one elements, and uh, suppose we know how it it maps to x sub k minus one. X sub k minus one here, I mean, it's the it's the corresponding um, uh, reduced expression for the for the for the uh, sub expression uh, of w k minus one. And uh, we define uh, LLK as a morphism from WK to X sub K by this algebraically, by this formula. So we have a phi sub K, what that we're going to define in the next slides, um, uh, composed with LLK minus one and the uh, identity. I mean composed, I mean uh, concatenated uh, next to each other diagrammatically. So it's a tensor product, so it's appropriate to Now diagrammatic, the, uh, diagrammatically what I've said is, is pictorially it's clear by looking at this picture. So this is a my much nicer uh, description of what I was trying to say. And uh, so uh, the LLK, uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks Lihan, thanks. Yeah, I needed uh, three points, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a much clearer diagram, so yeah. Yeah, okay, so we describe phi sub k now. Okay, so um, phi sub k depends on the decoration given to e sub k. Uh, and uh, for, for each case, we know that the decorations are u0, u1, uh, d0, and d1. And so we have four cases, and we need to give the description for four possible for each case, the phi sub k for each case. So for the case u0, this is essentially re recalled that this is essentially that the, the 
the product of the first i elements has greater Borohat order than the product of the first i minus one elements, but that the reduced expression, the stroll does not actually take uh, S sub i into consideration. So we define phi sub k to be uh, the, 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 the identity, the, 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 the identity, uh, the, the stroll which the, the morphism from the word from S1 up to S sub i, which, um, which takes the identity on the first i, uh, i minus one elements, and then cancels the, the i term, the S sub i. Yeah. And um, since by what I have said, the, 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 the reduced expression from the, the, this composition and need not, the target has not be, need, need not, the source need not be the same as the, the one for the target and the previous step. So we need to deploy here a Rex move in order to adjust for this uh, dissimilarity. So, uh, now for the case U1, so recall that the case U1 is similarly is that the, 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 the product of the first I terms, the S1 up to SI has greater Bruhat order than the product of the first I minus one terms. However, uh, this time the S sub I is actually included in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sub expression too. So, we can, we just want it to be the, phi sub k, we just want it to be the identity. However, for this um, problem that we have mentioned that would appear over and over, that the, the, the reduced expression need not be the same. So we need to deploy um, a Rex move alpha. Okay, now the third case, D0. Now recall that D0 is the case that the, the Bruhat order of the product of the first i te terms is less than the Bruhat order of the product of the first i minus one terms. However, S sub i is not included in the sub expression. So uh, now this morphism is slight, it might seem a bit complicated, but it's not. So um, we know from the, from the earlier theorems that if um, w, w, for example, oh, suppose in another word, if Y is a reduced expression and um, uh, is, a, is, a, yeah, is a reduced expression and um, the YT has, uh, has uh, suppose YT has, um, has less Bruhat order than, uh, than Y, then there exists another reduced expression which puts T as the final, as the final uh, term in the product of the, the, in the word Y. And so this is the morphism here, so essentially, we, we, the, the, the first, the, the W sub I minus one, or W sub K minus one, sorry here, W sub K minus one. Uh, we, we use beta to go to this other, the Rex move beta to go to this other um, uh, reduced expression, which has uh, S sub K as its final, final term. Then we the with the two the s sub k the, which is at the end which with the new s sub k will get multiplied and they cancel each other, and then we uh, that's the morphism represented here, and then we use an other alpha to just deal with the problem of not having the same uh, the source not having the same uh, uh, reduced expression as the target. So it's it's the problem that we've talked about here. So this is the morphism, the case three, and the case D zero. This is the description for phi sub k. And finally, uh, the 
Oh, sorry, uh, I said something wrong. They, they, they don't multiply and cancel each other. They, 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 they are joined to, to be the same. So the, the S at the end and the S before it, they, they, they are merged together. So, and, and uh, so I am very sorry for this. And the, the fourth case, the D1 case, is the case where they multiply together and cancel each other out. So this is the, the, the phi set K here in the case D1. So, yeah, so I uh, start with an example. This example actually was in the book, so I don't know why, why I had to, I'll do it again here, but, but just because it's, it's a bit clear. So I'm sorry for the lack of colors, but uh, uh, I, try, I enumerated the, 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 the the points that, that on the, and the, um, on the boundary just to to know which is which to to differentiate between the morphisms. So we start with a word uh, uh, S T S U T U and then T at the end, and we we don't take a sub expression. So uh, so uh, the corresponding uh, decorations are U one U one. U1, U1, and the final two are the D1 and D1. So applying the, the operations that we, uh, that we talked about. So uh, first, um, okay, so uh, and on the first level, we stay, uh, we don't change anything, which is, um, uh, which represent the, the composition of the first um, one, two, three, four, five, the first five strolls essentially. So the first line represents what's happening when the first five strolls were corresponding to the first, first five strolls. And then just as the first D1 appears, problems start to happen. So we need to do two rex moves in order as de defined by the, by the phi sub k corresponding to the move D1. So we need to do two rex moves in order to uh, uh, for the u's to cancel out, and then again for the t's to cancel out, and we get this uh, graph. Okay. Now um, another example. So suppose we have a word. Uh, composed entirely of S, S's, M times, so it's M S's. And I claim that we're going to give a complete description of all possible light leaps uh, coming from uh, sub expressions of this. And uh, okay, I claim that it is the following. So it's the tensor product of A1 up to AK and tensored with B where each uh, A sub i is, um, is of type one, as you can see in this picture here. I'll comment on this diagram in a uh, few seconds. And B can, take, uh, can be of type either type one or type two. Uh, and moreover, we need, of course, the condition that M is the sum of the sources in B plus the sum of the sources in A sub i, the sum of the overall i. And let me explain what, what I mean by type one and type two. So um, uh, essentially uh, all, all elements represented by dots here can be either uh, any number of them. So it, they can be either one, two, or even zero. So that's the important remark. Um, and it's, 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 it's just by direct uh, computation because uh, 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 yeah. So uh, any light leaf is a is a is a composition of 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 the, of, the, of, the, of diagrams of this type of type A one, and it ends with either a type A one uh, representing a um, a D one at the final element or a D zero at the final or at U one at the final element. Yeah, okay. 
So here's an example of something that is not a life leap. And this is a, like, a, like a small corollary of what the previous example. So this is not a life leap, although it can be uh, represented as a, uh, of course, because we know that it is a basis, but essentially one can have an explicit description of the coefficients of the double leaves for this uh, graph. And it is an exercise in the book. Okay, now we come to the main theorem uh, of this section, and it says the following. So, uh, say the, the essential thing, essentially it says that the W leaves form a basis. So suppose we have expressions W and Y in the Cox system, and um, we denote LLWY, uh, we denote by LLWY the collection of LLFE as the double leaves uh, defined earlier, um, corresponding to every triple uh, satisfying this property that uh, they have the, the, the restriction of the, uh, or the evaluation of the sub-expression gives the same element X. Um, and we take the, the choose an, a representative for each X and pair of uh, such pair. Um, and we, this is the, the family LLWY. And the claim it is that it, is a, it forms a basis in the diagrammatic category and for the home space of uh, the, between from W to Y as a right or a left module. Okay. So an exercise. Um, Okay, so the, the recall that from say, section five, that the Sorgel home formula, which gave a, an explicit de description for the ranks of the, um, of the home group between uh, B and B prime, if B and B prime are the Sorgel bimodules. And uh, uh, it gives them, uh, uh, with respect to the, to the bilinear product on the, in the Hecke algebra. So an exercise, and, and it's actually, it's, it's an easy exercise in the book to use this theorem, big theorem, actually it's very big theorem, to use this uh, big theorem and other results, uh, basic results about the, the Deodar uh, formula and such things, to deduce that the rank of the home group between the bots and Watson uh, bimodule corresponding to W and the bots and Watson by module corresponding to Y, that this home group is actually uh, has the, the size of this uh, family LLWY that we have defined uh, that uh, in the in the theorem. Yeah. So now we can prove a corollary, which I think it's as nice as the theorem, if not nicer. <laughs> The corollary says that um, the previously defined functor f from the diagrammatic category uh, to uh, uh, both Samuelson bimodules is an equivalence of categories. So we have only one missing ingredient to actually provide a proof for this corollary, which I'll take it for, for granted. And uh, it's that uh, f is a faithful functor. So, um, so we'll suppose that f is a faithful functor. We'll assume that. Suppose f is a faithful functor. Uh, then, uh, knowing that the LLWY is a basis, uh, meaning that its elements are linearly independent, so uh, f being a linear functor, uh, it sends linearly independent, uh, and being faithful, it sends linearly independent um, uh, uh, elements to linearly independent elements. And using the Sorgel home formula, we, uh, because they, those are graded, uh, graded, uh, graded uh, ca ca categories of graded by model, graded models essentially. So we can prove that if uh, the ranks are equal and the, it takes basis of one category to linearly independent elements in the other category, then they have to be essentially, uh, the functor needs to be, the image of the functor has to be also full. So it's uh, surjective in some sense. So um, 
and thus it is an equivalence of categories. And for this missing ingredient uh, of, of the proof, uh, the proof that F is faithful is actually implicit in the proof of the previous theorem. That we're not going to mention the proof that much, we're not going to talk about it much, but it's implicit in the proof of this theorem because it passes through localization and such constructions. Yeah. So we'll skip it, we'll skip that. Okay. So now this is the end of part one, and we'll move to part two. And uh, yeah, so um, the goal of part two is to construct another categorification of the Hecke algebra, but that is completely diagrammatic. So um, uh, and it 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 has very it has essentially the same properties as the Sorgel the first Sorgel categorification that we have seen in the section five. So in order to, okay, so I, I want to just um, define a new uh, diagrammatic category, which will, we will get it from the old one, HPS. And uh, to, to, to actually define it, I need just to, 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 to define a few, to give a few uh, definitions. So recall that a graded category is, a, uh, is one uh, in which uh, all uh, homomorphism sets are Z graded abelian groups such that the composition of the of an I of degree I homomorphism with a degree J gives a degree I plus J homomorphism. And uh, okay, this is the first definition. Second one is that to a pre-additive category, uh, a shift functor uh, is, is an, is an which is like, um, uh, ISO is like, um, okay, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, for every X in C, we have, we can assign to it an element uh, X1 in the sh shift and that it has an inverse. So it's, uh, it's an isomorphism. So uh, one can for uh, for uh, to, uh, to 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 a category with ha with, which has a shift functor, one can construct a graded a corresponding graded category by defining the new home sets to be the uh, given by this format. So it's the, uh, the 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 graded the element of degree the morphism of degree k would be the morphism from x to the k shift of y. And uh, actually, okay, uh, this functor has an adjoint, has a left adjoint. And um, uh, we, uh, we, 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 the definition of this uh, left adjoint is uh, as follows. We will need actually the left adjoint, not the, 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 not the other one, not the great function. functor. So um, the object in the shift, so suppose we have a graded category. We want to get a sh category with a shift functor. So the objects in this category would be the formal objects of the form X n. Uh, X is an origin is an object originally in the in C, and the morphisms are now defined to be uh, by this form. So uh, now we can construct the diagrammatic algebra, the general diagrammatic algebra from the Bot Samuelson diagrammatic algebra in three steps. So first we apply the shift functor, uh, not the shift functor itself, but we give uh, HBS the, 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 the structure of a shift category, a category with shift functor, I mean. And then we take the additive closure of this category, which means that we just allow for, uh, it's a tool to allow for uh, direct sums. And then we take the Karubian envelope, which was mentioned earlier, and it, I think the additive closure also was mentioned earlier, but the Karubian closure is envelope is a tool to, uh, to allow, um, be able to take uh, the, um, uh, direct, uh, to have direct summons in the category. Okay. And the, 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 the grammatic hacker category, which we we'll see, we, which we are seeking, is taken to be the resulting category from applying those three steps to HBS. Okay. 
Now we have the corresponding <laughs> Sorgel categorification theorem, and that's uh, uh, okay. So uh, it, 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 it will show in a second that it's very analogous to the old Sorgel categorification theorem regarding uh, Sorgel bimodules, using Sorgel bimodules. So uh, for each uh, reduced expression, uh, W. Uh, the object W in the corresponding object in the Hecke, uh, in the diagrammatic Hecke category, uh, has a unique in the composable direct sum B sub W, uh, which does not occur as a direct sum in any shorter expression. Uh, and the second uh, uh, property is that for uh, W in a Coxeter group, uh, if W and W prime are reduced expressions for the, this uh, element, then uh, the, the BW and BW prime are uh, isomorphic. Um, and third property is that up to shift, any in the composable object uh, of this diagrammatic Helke category is isomorphic to some BW. And the fourth uh, fourth uh, property is that the 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 map which takes the uh, um, lustig basis element corresponding to S to uh, to uh, to S the corresponding uh, element in the Hecke diagrammatic Hecke category induces a, a Z V V plus one uh, minus one algebra isomorphism from the Hecke Iwahori algebra to the uh, the Grotten the deep categorification of the, of the diagrammatic Hecke category. And finally uh, the Sorgel home formula, which we had an analogous one to the Sorgel, the first the earlier Sorgel categorification theorem. The Sorgel home formula in this case um, gives the, the 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 right rank to the home spaces. And just to compare, I have put <laughs> on the same slides <laughs> the two uh, versions of the Sorgel categorification theorem. One is the diagrammatic cate categorification and the other one is the one using the Sorgel bimodules. And essentially if one reads them, it, they are the same. So uh, they are the same categorification, but one is entirely algebraic and the other is entirely diagrammatic. And it's a beautiful re result. And uh, this is the culmination of my talk. And I thank you very much. This is the end of my presentation. Yeah, yeah thank you very much for the, for the nice talk. And this is a very nice last slide, actually. Uh, so, uh, so it actually summarizes the whole seminar. Thank you, everyone everyone for listening. So um, as you just explained, we have this beautiful category unification theorem 11.1. Well, 5.24 is also beautiful, of course, but 11.1 is in particularly beautiful, which basically says that um, the diagrammatic category is a categorification of the hacker algebra. And in the diagrammatic category, you can do everything ex completely explicitly, as you just explained in your talk, like writing down bases or whatever. Um, it, it might be some slightly involved combinatorics, like writing down the slightly spaces, but in the end, you can you can always do it in any example you want. While in um, the original category itself, so the one in theorem four, uh, sorry, to five twenty four, I mean it's just much harder to work in it. And the whole idea of the seminar was kind of to, if you have some object whatever it is, in algebra and combinatorics or whatever, that you think is interesting, let's say because it is a categorification of hack algebra, but it's, it's really hard to work with. Um, you might want to apply some diagrammatic methods to study it. Right? That's what you have seen in the last whatever, five talks. And the end, the diagrammatic category isn't all that bad. It's, it's actually pretty nice. So it, almost all relations are topological in nature, Okay, you have those funny Rex moves there. They look a little bit complicated, but you really need them because, well, there is no choice of reduced expression. And they basically 
are the isomorphisms between the between the reduced expressions. So um, in point two of, for example, in point two of theorem 11.1, one, um, actually BW underline and BW underline prime are isomorphic via Rex moves. That's that's why you, that's why you need them, right? They, they still prefer choice, so you have to have some isomorphisms. But up to those um, to those Rex moves, the zygomatic category is extremely beautiful, and there's very natural morphisms coming from coming from uh, the topology of surfaces. And in the end, it's somehow possible to work in this category. So this theorem 11.1 is really amazing. And that's what I wanted to, to, to sell in, in, uh, in this seminar. So thanks everyone for, for listening. It was a pleasure. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you also had a lot of fun. And this is really, just keep it in mind, it's, it's just one example of a general philosophy, which is um, really conquering all of mathematics, or let's say all of algebra, to be a little bit more careful here, um, is that a lot of kind of classical results have some diagrammatic in in incarnation. The diagrammatic incarnation is usually, usually much easier to work with. Um, as soon as you have the corresponding theorem. So, in a lot of cases, it's not easy to prove that your diagrammatic category, let's say, it's, it's equivalent to the algebraic one. But as soon as you have established that theorem, uh, life is really wonderful and beautiful. And that's what I wanted to, wanted to sell. Thanks, everyone, for, for always, always coming to the seminar. Uh, let's thank all the speakers and also, also you again. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. I enjoyed it very much. And uh, on my website, you will, of course, find all, all videos and all, all slides. And